Hello everyone. This is uh, the chapter of your science book. We have already finished it. You remember we have done on the online classes. We have done during the online classes. Many students were absent. They were not there, maybe because of the net connection or any other reason. So this is a revision class. I just recapitulate whatever the important points we have done in class. So it will be easy for you. Those who were absent, they can follow it up. This is, the topic is adaptation in animals. Now, what is the meaning of the word adaptation? When it is required. Adaptation, you know the English meaning of the word adaptation, means to adjust. Now, why do the animals need to adjust? Obviously, there will be some reason for that, for adaptations. And what's that reason? The reason is when they stay their habitat, main point is the habitat, wherever they are living. Like some animals, they live in very cold countries, Arctic region, Antarctic region, some in hills, some live on the plants or the trees. We, we are all here on the, uh, this, on the uh, plain areas. So de uh, depending upon the habitat, when the animals, they have to adjust themselves, the animals which live in water. They have to, they have their own uh, structure of the body, how they can breathe, how they can move. It will be very different from us, the one which are, we are on the land. So this is the topic we are going to discuss, that the different adaptation, the changes to survive, the changes they make in their body, the changes that in the system, so, so that they can live easily. That is called the adaptation. And what are the different habitats? You know, we have done about the aquatic animals, the animals which are living in, water, living in water. We are the land animals and some animals in the colder countries. Obviously, the temperature in the snowy region. So their skin, their body covering will be very different from ours. So this is what is a very simple topic. There's nothing to uh, learn much. Only the terms I've already written for you on the board. You see, I'll just quickly we revise it, right? So the adaptation in animals for the reason, first let's take the breathing, for the breathing purpose. That means what is breathing, you know, taking in of oxygen and giving out of carbon dioxide, which is one of the most important life activities. All living things, they breathe. Now, first I've written here number one, gills, and the example written is fish. Obviously, the gills are the breathing organ of the aquatic animals. Now we don't have gills, we cannot survive in water for long, but the fish and the other animals which are the aquatic and will live in water, their special breathing organ is the gills. And they, the gills are made in such a way that they are richly supplied with the blood capillaries, they can absorb the oxygen and they can give out the carbon dioxide. They, you know, you have seen the fish, when they breathe the mouth open and close, and when the mouth is closed, the operculum the covering that opens. So alternately, water that enters through the mouth will be covering over, they will pass over the gills, so oxygen will be absorbed and carbon dioxide will be released. So gills are the mm, breathing organ of the aquatic animals, the animals which live in water. Moist skin, frog, you know hibernation, when the frogs they go for long winter sleep, the animals will go for long summer sleep. What happens? They hide themselves. So that time, they, uh, the skin, the covering of the body, the skin is moist. Little bit of uh, water absorbed there. And that, that amount of oxygen which is remaining into that water is enough for them to carry out their life. They, you know, they, when during hibernation, the animals, they stop all the activities. Only breathing, just for them to survive. And for that, that the moist skin, they use for that. They do not use, normally the uh, frogs have the lungs, but they do not use lungs. That time they use the moist skin, toad, frog, etc. Now, spiracles, cockroaches, the insects. On the body, they have got the, you have seen the two small uh, wings are there. On the side of the body, the abdominal part of the body, they have got tiny holes. These holes are called the spiracles, and through the spiracles, they breathe. And for us, how do we breathe? How do you breathe? Obviously, we all have got lungs. You have done, uh, you will do it later on about the respiration and the process. So we breathe through the lungs. The air we take in through the nose, it goes to the lungs. And lungs are richly supplied with the blood capillaries. So oxygen from the lungs will be taken, carbon dioxide will be given out, and that we breathe out. So lung, for us, the breathing organ is the lungs. So for breathing purpose, depending on the different habitat, we have got so many types. Uh, what are the adaptations? 
with gills, with moist skin, with spiracles and with lungs. Now next we come to the body covering scales. Fish, you have seen the fish or uh, some other, even the snakes, if you have noticed very carefully, they also have the head region. They have got the very fine thin transparent scales over the body. To protect the covering means just to protect the body, surface, body surface. Shell, or if you have seen the snail, you have seen snail moving along with the shell. But if they are scared, if you go near or you touch anything, immediately they, what they do, do they, they, what do they do? They hide themselves within, they just withdraw and they go into the shell. So that is the protective covering for them, the shell. Fur or wool, sheep, in the hilly areas you have seen the sheep, they have got, because it's very colder country especially, the fur, the wool, it gives them the protection because it acts as the insulator. It doesn't allow that too much of cold outside to affect the body. So the covering of the body, the skin, they have got the fur and the wool. Feathers, all of you know, birds, feathers, they have got two, one pair of, uh, normally the animals have got two pairs of limbs. But in fur, birds, you have, we have discussed in class, the fur is the four limbs. They are modified into wings. What do they do with the help of the wings? They fly, they flap their wings and they fly. So wings are helped, helping them to move around, to fly out and it is also the covering the body surface, giving them the insulation, protecting the inner part of the body. And the last one, porcupine spines. Some animal, the hedgehog, you have seen the pictures, you may not have seen the actual one. They have got the very fine spines for protection so that the enemies will not be able to attack them. So for covering how many have got? Scale, shell, fur, feathers and spine. Next the feeding habit depending upon the food. You know the which are most important things about food and shelter. That's the two important things for which all the animals are surviving. So the feeding habit depending upon what type of uh, food they eat, their habit will be, they are classified into four groups. Herbivores, only plant eaters, like we, some of us, we are vegetarian, that means we don't eat non-veg food. Vegetarians only eat the plant products, they are called the herbivores. I've given you one, one example here, but you can give your own example also, no problem. So good. Second one is the carnivores, the lion. The one which eat only flesh, flesh eaters. Third was omnivores. Dog is there, we human beings also. Some of you must be eating veg and the non-veg, both type of food. So the omnivores are the ones who, which will be herby and carny both together. And that last one is the scavengers. Scavengers actually are those which feed on the dead remains. Dead remains of the animals, the bodies. So that is the scavengers. So apart, according to the feeding habits, we have got herbivores, carnivores, omnivores, and scavengers. Right? So these are the three reasons for adaptation. First of all, why adaptation? What is adaptation? We have discussed. Then for breathing, this covering of the body surface and feeding habits. One more little thing we have done already in this chapter, if you remember, that is the mi migration. What is migration? Like many of you might be having your relatives uh, living abroad. They have migrated. They were born here. They were brought up in India, but they have switched over. They have gone abroad. So migration means mass movement from one place to another. That is called the migration in animals. And this is mainly for the food, for shelter and for the reproduction, for breeding. Why especially it is seen in the animals of the very cold countries. You have heard, you have uh, read the stories must be that uh, from the Arctic Antarctic region during the uh, winter time, flock of birds, many birds, it's not one or two, it's many, it's a mass in group. They just come over to the countries tropical countries which are warmer. So they will come over, they will stay and pass the time and once the uh, season or the conditions are favorable, they are back, they will go back. So migrating means it's a temporary, migrating from one place to another temporarily for food and shelter and breeding purpose. Many are there, so you, I'll give you in the uh, note that I send you the PDF, you have got more examples there. So it is just a uh, revision of the total chapter, full chapter, right? Thank you children.